Hi, I'm Dave from Hardy Scale Models, and this is the final part of my video build for the FX 1 to 70 second scale BEA Nimrod. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and uh, I thank you for everybody who's watched the videos so far. Um, got way more views than I thought I was going to get. Like I say, I'm just doing this for a bit of fun, so that's been absolutely great. Uh, so, the video today is the last part. Um, it's a little bit longer, it's well, a couple of minutes longer. And it's just all the final parts of the construction, putting the, the very small parts on the outside of it, uh, a little bit of weathering, some decals, um, and then basically at the end I've got some uh, sort of final photos of the final reveal, if you want to call it that, of, uh, of the model finished. Um, it's actually been a really, really nice kit to build this. Um, it, 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 it's very easy to build, it goes together well really good points are for example like the undercarriage are really solid they're like really click into place so th there's no issue with weight on it when you put it down um <clears throat> i am a bit disappointed with certain aspects of it um, but i'll talk about that as the video goes through um but overall i'm really happy with how it's turned out and for a first video build um yeah i don't know how people do this there's, there's there are people who do this as a profession and i don't know how to do video builds every day it's just been it takes so long after work getting in your mojo on to do the model and then video it and then edit it and then whatever but it's been enjoyable it's been good fun my sons love watching the videos and watching the progress of the model um so once again thank you very much uh for everyone who's subscribed and everyone who's watched the, uh, the videos I've, I've really enjoyed doing them and i'll, I'll do another one soon uh, but uh, here we go. This is the last video and um, Yeah, enjoy. Let me know what you think. Cheers now. Bye Okay, so if you skipped over the first bit there with me just not run away, I don't blame you um, so this is the uh, Sort of latter stages of the decal process where I've got most of the main ones on now And it's just some of the smaller decals that we're putting on um, I have had a big issue with the decals on this Um Mainly because of the bad paint job, uh, the, the the issues I had putting the paint down and then in the previous video I showed how the clear coat had reacted with that paint um, and it wasn't a smooth surface so when I've put the decals down a lot of them are silvering and basically you can see the backing paper on them uh, which hasn't been great so it's a little bit disappointing but the only other option I could really think of was to strip the model back to plastic and start again and I really don't have the time to be honest to do that it's taken me four months to do this build uh just obviously work full time etc etc um so yeah we just didn't have that time so uh here you can see i'm using microset and microsol um products to uh use on the deck walls so once i've put them in the water to soften them i'm using microsol sorry microset uh to help it adhere to the surface of the of the plastic and uh sink down into the any sort of surface features um, like I say, unfortunately, this hasn't worked too well on some of the decals uh, because of the bad surface area. Uh, and as a result of that, there is some silvering. Uh, and this decal that you can see me fitting now, unfortunately, is one of the ones that's uh, silvered a bit. I've tried a few things to, to resolve it, and it hasn't worked as well as I'd like to. Um, so, yeah, you live and learn. Um, I won't make the mistake again. And if the uh, paint job's not good enough, I'll have to just uh, do it again. So, yeah, getting the decals down and then here I'm just using a cocktail stick just to help it drop down into that uh, panel line underneath it just a little bit. Not too hard. I'm not trying to rip it or cut it or anything like that, um, but uh, just to give it a helping hand to sink down into that line. And then on the underside of the aircraft here, what I'm doing now is I've put the last of the decals on and I'm now using Micro Sol um solution to i give every decal a little wipe of microsol solution and what that does is it really softens the decal up and as it dries it drags it down further into the sort of the contours of the of the model the idea being that the the decal will look painted on and not stuck on so yeah those are the last of the decals going on and now what i'm basically doing is just touching a few things up uh, that didn't look quite right and also what I'm trying to do here is a little mix of PVA glue and water just to try and fix this deck. Well, as you can see, it's really poor. So I'm using micro crystal clear PVA glue. 
um, all sorts of different PVA goes out there. You don't have to use this one. Um, so mixing it with a little bit of water, water it down, and I'm using it basically as a, as a paste that you would see with wallpapering. Um, so I'm just painting that over the deco and trying to get it to stick down because this is the issue where they're just not sticking uh, and ripping. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't save this deco, so I've had to make do with it the best I can. Uh, but the solution did work and it did start to stick. So this is where we got to, uh, all the decals are now on. So what I'm gonna do now is put another clear coat down uh, to seal them well in. So this is a matte clear coat, Tamiya Matte Clear, and I'm spraying it through the airbrush. Uh, so it's thinned about 50% uh, with my airbrush thinner, and just giving it a complete coat over the entire surface area, and it'll seal in all of the paint, all of the decals, all of the weathering uh, that I've put in at that point. And uh, the underside obviously had the pre-shade, which you can see there. Um, thinking about it now, I would have done the pre-shade a little bit like It is quite quite drastic, but it is the first time I've tried to do it. Uh, I quite like it, but it wouldn't be that obvious on a real aircraft, maybe. So next time I probably won't do it that uh, that sort of standing out that much. Um, so basically sealing everything in now, including the in the undercarriage bays. And then that's the plane all dried with a matte coat on it and ready for the next step. Uh, so here what I'm doing is I'm filling in a few uh, extra holes that are not needed. Uh, depending on which version of the aircraft you do, um, you don't use all of the, the holes for various antennas and things like that. And if I'd read the instructions properly, um, I would have done this before I'd painted it, but hey ho, there you go. Um, so I use Tamiya White Putty to fill in the holes, leave it for a day, uh, and then I'm using uh, Ultimate Modeling Products Thinny Sticks, a really good product. Uh, small sanders is basically what they are, and they're very, very, very good. Um, and using those just to sand it all down, get it as smooth as possible again, uh, using the first sander and then using a buffer. And then, yeah, making sure I'm happy. Use my finger over the over the point that you just filled in. Make sure you're happy with it. Uh, and then before I've pre sort of before I've pre painted those again, uh, just using Tamiya panel line accent color, which is a brown color, and this is just to highlight some of the more uh, less obvious panel lines around the aircraft that I hadn't looked at so far, where the pre shading wasn't. Uh, particularly strong uh, just using this to highlight the panel lines uh, so you put it put it on the line let it fill in the, the sort of capillary action or drag it along the line and then when it's done you can clean it up and to do that you just use a cotton wool board with a little bit of thinners uh, sorry enamel thinners sorry and as you can see just sweep it across the opposite direction of the panel line uh, just go perpendicular and this basically makes it nice and neat and it's a like I say, you just you don't need to leave that massive amount of time, just a, an hour or so will do. Now that the clear coats are down and I've put on all of the sort of panel line weatherings and everything I want to do that way, uh, it's now time time to take the masking off. Uh, so the masking that I've still got on the uh, on the main canopy and on all of the side windows uh, on this aircraft, uh, there are quite a lot. Um, so taking those off, it's a masking kit, an Edward masking kit, which you can see in one of the previous uh, videos that I did, uh, which basically, if you're not super confident doing masking yourself with masking tape, I'm not. Um, I use these, these kits, which are really, really handy. But it just leaves a lovely, uh, neat finish on the, on the uh, windscreen. And now basically moving on to the undercarriage. And now that I've pretty much finished, get the, start getting the wheels on. So getting the front wheels on. Uh, and then getting the rear wheels on and on I'll be honest on this kit the the undercarriage was absolutely brilliant the, the front one's built in it's one of the first it's the first step of the build is the front undercarriage but I've just kept the wheels off until now to protect them uh, but the rear ones uh, are really sturdy and they're literally as you're about to see you push it down into a, into a slot it's normally a little hole that you, you stand it up in and glue it in and wait for it to set but this one here you push it into the gap and it it's very tight fitting goes in perfectly you could almost get away with not using glue uh the one on the left there was absolutely rigid i could have got away without using glue on this one I've, i do have to use glue um and then you put the little support and straight in uh but really really strong easy to put together undercarriage really enjoyed that 
And then finally, once the undercarriage is on, just get the undercarriage doors on. Uh, and for this, I'm just using, I've used uh, the Tommy extra thin cement, but then I, to just to secure it, it wasn't as secure as I'd like. I came back off camera later and uh, used uh, some super glue when, it, when one of them was a bit loose. I took it off and we used super glue to put them back on. And the final steps underneath here really now are some of the, there's a couple of antenna that need to go on. Uh, so just putting those on, uh, they've been painted white uh, with a sort of a black lead edge, which I do at the end once I've got them on the model. So we'll get those in again, the holes for these, I had to pre-drill and again, it depends which version you're gonna do. So I drilled out the holes for this, knowing that I was doing this version of the aircraft. Now that the bottom is finished, uh, just moving on to the top of the aircraft. Uh, so there's the last few pieces to fit on here. Uh, again, mostly there's quite a few small antennae to go on. And this is the main refueling probe that is going on for the air-to-air -air refueling that the aircraft would do. Uh, two pieces, the main part that you can see there, and then a small sort of uh, support and strut that went underneath. Uh, and again, very, very good fitting and uh, no issues at all. Uh, sometimes and stuff like this, you've got to really like mess around, cut and stuff, but no, no real need to do that. And then the very last steps that I had to do were on the back of the aircraft, there's a, a top and bottom of both sides of the tailplane, there's another set of antenna, uh, and this is what I'm attaching now. And this was the last stage, this was the last stage of the build. Um, so four months down the line, this is the last piece going in. So last week, my eldest son and I went down to uh, the Yorkshire Air Museum, which is an RAF, the old RAF Elvington station just outside York. Um, and they've actually got the aircraft that I'm building in this kit at that Air Museum, which I didn't realise until I got there. Uh, so this is the actual aircraft, um, XV250. And uh, yeah, and this is now my version of the aircraft, which I've spent the last four months doing. So here you go. I hope you like.